So um, even though we crashed last time, I'll reset this one here, except I know that I've got an origin issue on this one, and I'm going to do that ahead of time. <coughs> so um, Grasshopper, like I said, it's an add-in into Rhino. And within Grasshopper, what you do is um, link in types of geometry. So if I'm trying to loft these curves together, I essentially take, and I'm going to try the individual ones again here, see if that one will work for us. Um, you know, you reference in the three individual curves, and then you plug them in to an operator. So in this case, it's loft. Um, so I'll reference the first curve here, the second curve in the middle, and then the third cur curve there at the bottom, and then you plug them in to the loft command. And this is what you get. Um, so right now you see that it's a red surface, right? It's, it's red, it's see-through, you can see the curves. Um, I can still select the curves that I referenced, um, but the coolest part about this is um, where in Rhino, the curves were independent of the surface. Now that it's in Grasshopper, as I pull this up, it modifies the surface with it. So I can pull it up, I can yank it off to the side, I can twist it. Well, let me do that. I can twist it and completely modify that surface as I want to play around with it. So, you know, and, you know, like uh, Nafi's been asking for, well, why can't I just modify all this at once? Well, it's because Rhino is a static modeler. Grasshopper is a dynamic parametric modeler. So this one is, if you're looking for that kind of modeling process, this is the one for you. The, the challenge really is that, you know, the problem I had here with this one when I twisted it around, um, you have to know a lot more about your curves in order to get this one to work, right? So the problem was when I drew this curve the first time, it was this. And I made a copy of it and I pulled it here. And then I rotated that copy around 180 degrees. Well, when you do that, the curve has an origin point. It's the first point you clicked when you made it. And then it follows along in sequence with the rest. So there's an order to the way that the geometry is created. And so if you're going to um, be referencing those, you need to know a bit more about the geometry or else you're going to get glitches like that. So just giving you that as a forewarning. And that's why Grasshopper is a much more advanced modeling software because you know, if you're dealing with points in a grid, then you need to know exactly how points are going to be broken down when it's you know a series of cells versus a series of components that are flattened versus duplicates being deleted or having duplicates on top of one another. It's a very different ballgame than just static modeling. So any of you guys have general questions about that? No? Did I just blow you? Yeah, three D Max is also a param parametric modeler, but it's not quite as um, it's not quite as talented as Rhino uh, and Grasshopper is because Grasshopper can process a lot more information. So um, the cool thing I think that you'll find about Grasshopper in the future is that it's actually very similar to um, oh let me it's very similar to like a um, programming language in a way it's actually called visual programming you know the, the way of doing this type of modeling when you're building parametric relationships between things even in um, even in Excel Excel is basically a visual programming software where you're you're creating parametric relationships between different values or cells or elements or whatever it is um, but it has a programming background so you can look at you know information as a set of lists those lists can be reinterpreted into other languages, which are then plugged in as variables into the relationships in your model. So it definitely has a programming background, um, which is what makes it so advanced. No other questions? So you guys can, and I'm, I'm putting this in here for the video's sake, if you go to the website, Uh, on the YouTube channel, actually. So resources, YouTube. Um, under my playlists 
ARC222, summer 2015, has all of the Grasshopper videos. It's not quite as organized as uh, this current class is. I need to go through here and organize them with like numerical signifiers and stuff. But you'll see um, some pretty advanced stuff in here. Uh, let's see. One of the coolest ones, I think, was the Space Frame project. I think that one was the latest. The Space Frame one was pretty neat because you could actually create a relationship on a surface and create the, the structure of a space frame on any warped surface that you could possibly think of. And so you're starting to see here that these are getting you know, pretty intense. Uh, you have to deal with a lot of information in the way that you're stringing these things together. Let's see if we can get a full shot. There it is. There's a full shot of it. So it gets really intricate. A lot of it is just copy paste. It's not quite as intimidating as it looks, but uh, you get some really cool effects out of it. And so ultimately you wind up with a space frame like that on a warped surface. And that's fully modifiable. So if you created a new surface or you bent the surface in a new way, the space frame would modify to adapt to the new surface instantaneously. So if there aren't any questions, I'll stop the video there.